Hello everybody, we're going to uh, light another candle today in celebration of the second week of Advent, which um, if you follow the customary meaning of the four weeks of Advent, it would be the candle that represents peace. And we might wonder to ourselves, is there peace? Can there be peace in this world? And uh, the Bible has a lot to say about peace because it's a, it's a common goal and theme of the Bible is to, to have peace on earth. And one of the announcements in, uh, concerning Jesus and the birth was that this was going to usher in an era of peace. So I take you to chapter uh, 2 of Luke in the Holy Bible, in verse 8. And it says, And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them. And they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace to those on whom his favor rests. Then the story says the, the shepherds, these lowly, lowest level of society, people who were out there living in the fields with their animals, um, they ran to Bethlehem. It was close by and they found exactly what the angel said. There was Jesus lying in a manger with Mary and Joseph watching over him. So the angel announced peace, great, great joy for all the people. There is peace to all on whom God's favor rests. Well, you may be looking back at the history of the world and saying, ah, so where is that peace? How come there's still war, there's still fighting? There's, if you go from nations all the way down to families, there's fighting, there's conflict. So where's the peace? Well, the peace that Jesus brought as the Prince of Peace is not a political peace, at least not yet. There will be a kingdom of God in which when Jesus comes back, the world will finally be at peace between the nations and between the races. But the peace that Jesus is talking about and the Bible promotes in the New Testament is a spiritual peace. First of all, it is a peace with God. We need to be at peace with God because he's our creator. And because the Bible tells us that our sins make us into enemies of God, not that he wanted to be our enemy, but that because of our sins, he has no choice but to judge our sins. And uh, so I'm going to read for you from Romans chapter 5, how Jesus' birth was good news to bring peace to this situation. It says, therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. A little later on in verse 8 it says, You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though for a good person someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And since we have now been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? So here we have the plan. It says not only this, but we boast in God through Jesus Christ, through, through whom we have received reconciliation. You see, Jesus was the peace plan himself. He himself was our peace between God and us. When you have warring parties, you need to have somebody who can bring peace. You have to have a peacemaker, a negotiator, a mediator. And Jesus mediated a covenant between God and humans. And the, the ability to do that was because he was both God, he was divine, there was a part, uh, Jesus himself was fully human and fully God. He was the son of God, not the son of Joseph, he was the son of God, and he was also the, the son of human beings through Mary. 
So he was both fully God and fully man, and he could bring those two sides together. And how did he do that? He did that by paying the price for all humans through his blood on the cross. He made the sacrifice willingly to pay the price for peace. And he signed it in his own blood on the cross. And whoever now has faith in that peace, in his peace for us, is at peace with God. God no longer demands or has any condemnation for us if our sins are paid for by his very own son. So Jesus is our peacemaker and our Prince of Peace. There's another way that Jesus and the Christmas story brings us peace, and that is peace with others. Um, when Jesus began to teach, he said, Love your neighbor. Do unto others as you would have them do to you. He said things like, Pray for your enemy. Do good to those who abuse you. He was flipping things on his head and saying, eh, Instead of getting even and getting revenge, and going to war, Jesus' kingdom is about peace. It's about loving others, serving others, forgiving others who have harmed you because God, after all, forgave you of all your sins if you trust in him. So that spiritual peace with others, you forgive them, you, you, you pray for them, you even help your enemies to become better people, to hopefully change. But even if they don't, you are a person of peace, no longer of fighting and conflict. Well, the third type of peace Jesus brings to us through Christmas, through the Christmas story, is inner peace, inner peace. In John chapter 14 and verse 27, Jesus talks about a peace that you can't get anywhere else inside your mind. Is your mind at peace? Your heart, are your emotions at peace? Or are you worried? Are you troubled? Are you fearful? Are you angry, burnt up inside and carrying a big chip on your shoulder for the rest of your days? Well, Jesus says this, peace, I leave, I, I leave my peace with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give you as the world gives, do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Remember the angel said to the, to the shepherd, shepherds, don't be afraid, this is good news. Jesus is repeating that, he's saying, don't be afraid, good news, I'm with you. I bring you peace when the world brings you fear, when the world brings you anger and worry and trouble and death, don't worry. I am with you as your peace. I am your peace. I give you peace that the world knows nothing about. So you can have, as you learn to trust God, as you learn to not worry about daily needs and trust God that he's going to provide for you, that he's going to protect you, that he can bring resolution to conflicts in your life. The world says, oh, be afraid, be very afraid, be worried, be very worried. Be angry, very, very angry. Jesus says, have peace. Don't be afraid. Don't be troubled. I will give you inner peace. And as a believer, you can experience daily peace. Even though there's a storm of trouble going all around you, you can be in the eye of that storm with Jesus in your life. You can be emotionally, mentally, and spiritually calm because he is with you through that and in you to give you that sense of peace that in the end it's all going to be all right he's got it under control so i hope you have this peace from god peace with god peace with others and peace inside yourself because jesus is peace <laughs>